somebody told me that it was it um, Bolton got promoted last year with 86 points it's you know where, where are we now 82 it's um, we just have to keep going we have to uh, keep trying to pile the points on and another tough challenge at the weekend come in but and then we've got two tough away games you know it's we just have to keep keep the group together keep them working hard for each other try and keep them fit and just keep pushing on Blackburn Rovers looking to avenge the opening season defeat against Southend United when they visit Ewood Park this Saturday we'll talk about that match and more on today's show That's right folks, back once again with another match preview as we count down to the last seven games of the season. Blackburn Rovers up against Southend United Ewood Park. We'll talk more about that game in just one second. But if you're new, hit the subscribe button and keep your bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. Now let's take a look, closer look at the match itself. It takes place on Saturday the 7th of April at Ewood Park. Last season Southend United finished 7th in the league. They currently find themselves in 12th, their current top goal scorer is Jason Dimitriou with eight goals. He is a defender and the man pulling the strings at the moment is Chris Powell. Uh, Phil Brown was in charge when the two sides did meet. Now, over the years, the two sides have met 13 times. Rovers winning seven of them. Uh, we've lost two and we've drawn four between us. Uh, obviously, Safan picked up the win last time out at uh, Roots Hall. Let's take a look, closer look at the last time, few times that these two sides have met at Ewood Park. Rovers going into this unbeaten in five games between the two sides. Uh, top of the shop there, all the way back in 1972, Rovers won 2-1 in the Old Division 3. But the last time that these, these two sides did meet at Ewood Park was in 1992, the Old Division 2, Rovers 2, Southend United 2. Now let's kick on and take a look at the start 11 for Blackburn. This is how I feel they will start. Ryer in goal, Bennett, Lenahan, Mulgrew, Williams, Smallwood, Dak, Evans, Armstrong, Antonson and Graham. Let's take a look at the statistics now. Bradley Dak tops the pops with 17 goals. Danny Graham's in second place with 15. Charlie Mulgrew is still in third place with 12 goals. But new place at number four, Adam Armstrong with those nine goals. As for the discipline, Smallwood's still on nine yellows. Bennett has got eight. Evans has got seven. And Williams has seven. And into the Reds, two for Bennett, one for Samuel and one for Travis. How about the last five results? Blackburn Rovers coming into this. One, two, three wins on the bounce. Four wins out of five. And the only little hiccup was the 2-2 draw up against third place Wigan. Uh, so last time out, Rovers beat MK Dons at their place 2-1. Before beating Bradford City at Ewood Park 2-0. All the way back, 10th of March. Rovers 3-0 winners over GB's Blackpool. And right at the bottom of the shop there, 27th of February, we beat Wimbledon at their gaff. 3-0. How about the visitors? Well, they'll line up like this. Oxley in goal, Dimitriou, White, Turner, Coker, that's the dog, uh, McLaughlin, Yearwood, Trimlin, Knightley, uh, Robinson, and Cox. Let's take a look at the top goal scorers. Dimitriou's got eight goals, Cox has got eight, McLaughlin's got seven, and uh, Kitely has six. As for the yellows, Timlin has seven, Dimitriou has six, Cox has six, McLaughlin has five. As for the reds, Anton Ferdinand's in there with one. McLashen's got the other. How about the form book? Well, Southend are on a in a indifferent bit of form. They beat Gillingham 4-0 last time out at Roots Hall before losing to Plymouth away from home 4-0. 24th of March, they took on Rotherham United and they won 2-0. And that was at home. Uh, and then 17th of March, they drew with Blackpool 1-1 before being held to Rochdale 13th of March. So let's take a look at the form table for the last eight matches at home. First and foremost, Plymouth still in top spot. Rovers remain in second and Rotherham are now in third place. As for the away form for the last eight matches, it looks like this. South End is all the way down in 18th spot. So you would go into this thinking Rovers should pick up the three points. But football is a funny old game. Let's take a look at the fixtures for this coming Saturday. Rovers obviously taking on South End. The other one that we are really worried about is the Wigan match. They take on Struggles MK Dons. Are they going to bring their A game and hopefully scuffle uh, Wigan's promotion dreams? Because they need to win to get themselves out of that drop zone. Because uh, currently they find themselves, MK Dons, in 21st spot. Uh, the same amount of points that their bitter rivals, AFC Wimbledon, have. Uh, also on 42 points. As for the run-ins for each of the title contenders or the promotion contenders, Rovers have seven games remaining and the three banana skins I see are listed right here. Bristol Rovers away. Blackburn taking on Peterborough 
at home and uh, the penultimate game of the season at the Valley against Charlton, who are on a really good bit of form at the moment. They've got themselves back into the playoff contention <laughs> under Lee Bowyer. As for second place Shrewsbury, they are not in action this weekend. They're actually taking on Lincoln City in the League Cup on the League Trophy final. But they do have some really tricky games coming up. They take on Bradford City at their place. They take on Charlton at home before taking on Berry, who are struggling, pretty much doomed, to be honest with you. I think they could even be relegated at that point before they even take on Shrewsbury. They also take on Peterborough, who are still chasing for uh, uh, playoff contention, and they wrap it up with a tricky tie up against MK Dons. Again, they could be still battling for relegation come that last match of the season. As for third place, Wigan, they got a re I think they've probably got the hardest run in. They take on MK Dons at their place, struggles, uh, Rochdale also struggling. They did beat Shrewsbury, so I, I, I could see a potential tough game there. They also take on uh, Rotherham, who are trying to secure themselves a playoff spot. And also an automatic return. Well, I won't say an automatic return, but a instant return back to the championship. They also uh, take on AFC Wimbledon, the penultimate game of the season. Uh, but then, you know, to be honest with you, you, never, you can never bank on any of those uh, fixtures being winnable. It's, it's banana skins all over the place. Now, you've heard a little bit what I've had to say about the match. What did the gaffer have to say in an extended Talking Heads shortly after the final whistle against MK Dons? Yeah, listen, well, of course we were glad to see the final whistle. I think when you tune it up, we found that against Wigan a few weeks ago, didn't we? Tune it up, it's looking reasonably comfortable, you're in control, but yet you know the next goal is really important. We talk about that at half time, and, um, you know, unfortunately for us, they got the next goal and it gave them a real spur. The last 20 minutes, half an hour, as you say, was really. Um, um, no, some, some nervous moments, and yet we had a, a fantastic chance to finish it at 3 1. Dominic running through and put it over the top. Um, it's football, you have to accept sometimes teams are going to have big spells and good spells in a game. They gamble a little bit, they push extra men on, they, um, you know, they play man for man at the back, and, and that was all right for us. That's why Dominic ran away and nearly finished the game. It's, uh, and Armstrong did what he did because when you are gambling and pushing, pushing players on, trying to finish, uh, trying to get a goal back, you leave yourself exposed at the other end and it would have been nice for Dom to stick that in the net and finish it 3-1 but um, we had to rely ultimately on David making a good save or two and uh, some pretty desperate defending, throwing their bodies on the line but um, standing here now, the score lines in the history books, we, we came to the MK Dons and won 2-1 one, and um, let's put the points on the bag and let's move on. Listen, it always is for me, we're always accumulating points, you know, the first 10 games, we, I don't even look at the league table, it's about how many points are we going to get, we try to work around if we can get to two points a game, we, we're beyond that at the moment, you know, I think somebody told me that, was it um, Bolton got promoted last year with 86 points, it's, you know, where are we now, 82? It's, um, we just have to keep going, we have to uh, keep trying to pile the points on, and another tough challenge at the weekend come in, but and then we've got two tough away games, you know, it's, we just have to keep keep the group together, keep them working hard for each other, try and keep them fit and just keep pushing on. I think so, I, listen, I, I would never question, even if it, even if they did make a goal at the end, it's, uh, the, the fantastic desire from the team, um, you know, a group that are sticking together, that we, we're trying to keep them really, really focused on each individual game, not get ahead, not look at... Too, not too interested in what the other teams are doing around us. Just focus on what we do, how we play, what the process is that we, we play and how we try and get into the final third and how we try and um, play when we are in the final third. And, and, and generally, if you believe in the process, you just stick to them, you keep doing them week in, week out, the results will follow. Listen, I, ex I expect Adam to... Um, I think he's going to score every time he gets it sometimes around that box because he can shoot off both feet without... With no preference, it seems to me. I know he's right-footed, but... He strikes the ball particularly well with his left foot because he has to focus and concentrate more and he can drill him in. Um, he's, he's just his low centre of gravity and his burst of speed are, are devastating at times. Uh, we, we talked about leaving him out here wide on this right and, and at times it looks as if he's not doing anything but one transition, one change of possession, one forward passing behind them and he's in. And that's what we work on and that's how he's damaged teams at the moment. And. Um, Let's, let's see if we can continue in that vein. I don't know. I'm, I'm, listen, I'd like to think somebody else would have scored him if he wasn't scoring him. It's, um, you know, we've got players kicking their heels on the, on the touchline and, and the substitutes, Ben, who would probably want to want to be out there scoring goals. But, um, happy that Adam's here. We have to try and keep him fit, you know. It's, 
Adam, uh, sorry, uh, Harry Chapman was, was, was like a fan's favourite the first half of the season. Adam's come and replaced that sort of thing. And uh, happy for Adam, happy for Adam because it's been a frustrating time with his parent club, of course. And then he went to Bolton first half of the season. I don't think he was scoring as regular as he was as he is here, but um, he's playing at a different level, a different league, a different way of playing. I would suggest you know every manager's got their own way of how they want to play people, um, and I think he's just getting chances and he's sticking the ball in the back of the net. So delighted for him, delighted for the fans who made the trip today. Nothing achieved yet, you know. The games are ticking away. I'm not sure how many we've got left. Now we've got seven left, have we? Seven to go. Um, you know, got. I think is it four tough away games in that seven, is it? It's uh, so. Let's just keep going. Nothing's achieved. Work hard. Get back to work tomorrow. Everybody's in training tomorrow, and um, and let's prepare for the weekend. Yeah, listen, and I've said that all along, and yet I, I know if we finish out of the top two, it'll be a disastrous season. You know, it's it's. it's uh, we have to keep going. We have to stay mentally tough. We have to keep driving and pushing really, really hard. I think the fans. Um, they, they deserve us to be successful ultimately this season because of the travelling support that we've had and the, the, the money they must have spent to come and watch their team and, and hopefully enjoy seeing a team winning on the road. Um, I don't know how many games that is we've won on the road, 12 or 13, I'm not sure, but um, it's been a good good season on the road so far, but we have to finish it off. And that's why we shouldn't have any fear of, if it's seven games to go, we've got four, four away from home, we should have no fear about that, we should be relishing it and looking forward to it. Now you've heard a little bit what the gaffers had to say about the match, you've heard a little bit what I've had to say about the match. What did the fans been saying on social media? Well, to be honest with you, I don't think I got much. I got a lot of action and a lot of tidbits from the BRFCS forum. If you've not checked out the forum, make sure you do so. I've got the link in the description below. You'll catch up with fellas just like Big Dog Steel. He said, could be a banana skin here if we aren't careful. Attitudes and intensity need to be right. They had a big win today as well. Any result, as long as we win, will do. As for 1864 Rover, right? Any kind of win will do for me. It's all that matters. FGS5635. They are all big, big, big games now, but the next two are huge. If we can manage six points, then the pressure is really on the shrews. I have two tricky games. Just need to win this game in hand and give ourselves a get out of jail free card. As for Gav, last time I saw South End at Ewood, Brett Angel score was scoring for fun. We drew 2 2. Angel scored in front of 14,000 speedy sellers for Rovers. I'm going for the same gate with a 3 1 Rovers win. We lost at home to Wolves and Leicester. Kevin Russo Russell in the run in and went up in the playoffs. Great season, he said. Tom Phil said this first time I saw Pre uh, South End, it was on a Preston supporting mates. 18th, and he dragged us to Weepdale before a night out around the town. It was a grim nil-nil affair. We stood on the side enclosure near the away end with about 15 in it. Sam blew in face all afternoon off the plastic pitch, and I almost couldn't see by the end. The crowd was a whopping 3,000 or so. North End versus South End, lol. It wasn't one for the cameras. I'd be more or less forgotten about them after, after that until we encountered them early in the season, and they looked a tasty little outfit who overpowered Rovers with much fuss in a welcome to our division baptism. Uh, it, I'll go for a miserable nil-nil again, mainly because I, when I predict a draw, we play well and win. Rovers nil, South End nil, 12,753 folks at Ewood. Scotch Rovers said this, tough game I think this, but after the journey I made down there at the start of the season, I love to absolutely hammer them. That was one of the horrible afternoon, shortly to be followed by the Doncaster defeat. J.H. Rover said this, every game is a potential banana skin with the exceptions of Charlton and Peterborough. All the sides we have left are mid-table, bottom, half, going nowhere sides. South End, Donny, Gillingham, Bristol Rovers. I suppose Bristol Rovers might throw themselves in, into an unlikely play of contention with a strong run. And Oxford are looking over their shoulders, but should be safe by the time we play them. All those games are potentially banana skins, as none have any real pleasure or pressure on them for the rest of the season. I can approach their games against us as free hits. South End's away form is woeful. 11 away defence and three wins. Banana skin indeed, but we should have enough. As for Ben H. Ben, thought this might be an easier game at home versus a team with not much to play for. However, according to the form guide, they have only lost one of the last six. Drawn three, one, two, lost one. So perhaps not as simple. I could see another solid 2-0 home win. Armstrong and Graham. Still think there'll be twists and turns. Ourselves, Shrewsbury and Wigan won't win all the remaining games. Can't believe it's so tight at the top. 
and I'll end it how I began it, Big Dog Steel said this, the thing with our squad is we always seem to have at least one attacker really step up and do the damage to the opposition. If someday they all play to their ability, we will put five or six on the opposition. When you look at where we are in the league, it's surprising we haven't already. What, what's our biggest win? 4-1 versus MK Dons? You're right, Big Dog Steel, we did a Jewish stonking win. Uh, and I'm hoping that win comes this weekend when we take on Southend at Ewood Park. Now, over the years, a number of players have played for both Blackburn Rovers and Southend. Here are two of them. Well, this guy never really made the grade for Blackburn Rovers, but he did don the blue and white sh uh, halves for Blackburn Rovers, and he also played for Southend United. It's Jamal Johnson. Yep, I think he uh, might have played a couple of cameo appearances for Rovers, but to be honest with you, yeah. How about this guy, former Scottish international Christian Daly? Yes, he did play quite a few games for Blackburn Rovers, and he did uh, play some games for South and United towards the end of his career. Now, if you want to check out a full list of players who have played for both Blackburn Rovers and South and United, head over to my WordPress site, link in my description below. Now, you've heard a little bit what I've had to say about the match. You've heard a little bit what the fans have had to say about the match. You've even heard what the gaffers had to say about the match. But forget it. Put it in the back of your mind. It does not really matter. What really matters is what Cast the Cat thinks will happen between Blackburn Rovers and Southend United. What's that, Luna? What do you think will happen? That's her verdict. What does Cass think? That's all I've got for you today, folks. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. I'll keep you bang up today with all things Blackburn Rovers. We were given a big boost on Easter Monday when Portsmouth beat Wigan Athletic. And so the title race is still on. And also, should we beat Southend on Saturday, we will open up a four-point gap on Shrewsbury, who do not play, but we would have played the same games as them, if you catch my meaning. But anyway, that's all ifs, ands, and buts, or whatever. What really matters is we must win Saturday against Southend. Anyway, until next time, thumbs up, subscribe. Ciao for now. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It'll get you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. But if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe.